All right, guys, welcome into another edition here of the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Joe Ranieri, joined by JJ Zacharyson of FanDuel. And we're going to talk a little free agency right now. And there are a lot of teams that are going to have some new players on them wearing new jerseys. But how does that equate? We'll ask JJ here. And uh, I guess, JJ, there's no better place to start uh, than with the biggest name, how about Tom Brady right now? Projections heading into the year. What do you think about this? Yes, yeah, so you're going to hear a lot of people talk about Tom Brady not being a great fit in this Bruce Arians offense because the Bruce Arians offense throws a lot of intermediate and deep passes. Dating back to Arians being in Arizona, he's ranked in the top 10 in the league every single year in deep ball rate. Uh, and Tom Brady, over the last half decade at least, has not. Uh, but the one thing with Tom Brady is that he's actually ranked in the top half of the league in each of the last five years in completion percentage on passes that have traveled 15 or more air yards. Now you give him Chris Godwin, you give him Mike Evans, you give him O.J. Howard. Tom Brady's in a really good spot to produce and be very fantasy relevant. So right now my projections have met 4,476 passing yards, uh, almost 30 touchdowns, a little over 29 touchdowns, and just a little over 10 interceptions. You know, people sometimes equate deep ball with arm strength, but that's not the case, guys. Not the case at all. It just wasn't the uh, wasn't in the playbook there in New England. So I'm with you. I, I think we're going to get more than people expect. And there are an awful lot of people, JJ, that expect DeAndre Hopkins is going to explode too. Kind of been down as far as the projections go the last couple of years, the numbers. But what are the Arizona Cardinals getting, DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, it's a really interesting situation. If you look over the last nine or so years, so since 2011, we've seen 19 different seasons where a wide receiver has seen a 30% target share or better. DeAndre Hopkins owns three of those seasons. That's a really, really elite target share. But if you look at those 19 seasons, there's one thing that all of those seasons have in common, and it's that those wide receivers didn't have that much competition at pass catcher on their individual teams. Now, good wide receivers will see a good target share because you have to get open in order to see targets. Targets are a, are a skill statistic. Um, but if you look at DeAndre Hopkins' new situation, he's now competing with Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, Kenyon Drake out of the backfield. So even if you see this move to Arizona in the quarterback position being fairly level because Kyler Murray's an up-and-coming passer, you know, he doesn't, DeAndre Hopkins doesn't necessarily have the same ceiling that he had with Houston. He doesn't have that Michael Thomas type ceiling anymore. He's still going to be a wide receiver one in fantasy, but I do worry about there being a little bit of a cap ceiling, even if he sees, you know, like a 26% target share or, or so. So my projections right now have Hopkins at 100 receptions, 1,177 yards, and nine touchdowns. Yeah, I can imagine the party once uh, once the quarantine ends here that Kyler Murray's going to be throwing right now with the uh, the weapons he's going to have next year. He's got to be excited. And I uh, listen, fresh start sometimes works for everybody, including David Johnson, who is on his way to Houston from Arizona in the DeAndre Hopkins trade. What about David Johnson? Might we uh, rekindle the flame from a couple of years ago? We might. I mean, we know that Houston was an opportunity or, or place for opportunity for a running back to go to uh, with Carlos Hyde being a free agent. Carlos Hyde last year saw 72 percent of Houston's running back rushes, which is a pretty high rushing share for him. Uh, David Johnson has looked a little bit slower, uh, but we can kind of view this as a Carlos Hyde plus type situation because David Johnson is, is a good receiver. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, so if you look at it from that perspective where David Johnson could see some goal line work, he should see a decent amount of touches on the ground. My projection right now has him at 226 carries, 952 rushing yards, seven or so rushing touchdowns. But then through the air, I've got him at 35 receptions, 312 receiving yards, and one to two receiving touchdowns. So David Johnson, as long as he's able to maintain that starting gig in Houston, uh, he should be fantasy relevant. Yeah, you know, stick with the running backs. Uh, I don't know how much. I love guys that bet on themselves anytime, but I'm not sure how much money he lost by betting on himself. But talk to me about Melvin Gordon also going to be in a new location, no longer with the Chargers. What are your projections uh, for Melvin Gordon going into the season? Yeah, it's a tough scene for Melvin Gordon after uh, everything that's gone down over the last year. But he goes to a Denver team that has a crowded backfield already. We've seen Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman split that backfield last year. I think this move makes Royce Freeman pretty irrelevant from a fantasy perspective. So we're really looking at Melvin Gordon versus Philip Lindsay. The one interesting aspect of this Broncos backfield, and Philip Lindsay in particular, is that last season, during the first half of the season, he was seeing a, a target share per game 
that was in the 13 to 14 percent range and then the second half of the season that dropped to under seven percent so basically uh, cut in half during the second half of the year we know that Melvin Gordon's a pretty good pass catcher out of the backfield even though he was sort of being overshadowed by Austin Eckler this past season uh, so Melvin Gordon could carve out somewhat of a role especially given the fact that we've seen Denver sort of cap Philip Lindsay's rushing upside given his size so Gordon, to me, not an ideal landing spot going to Denver, uh, but I do have him for 203 attempts, 886 yards on the ground with six to seven touchdowns. Uh, but then through the air, I have him with 40 receptions and then another touchdown as well. You know, the not quite the, the wide receiver he used to be, but still the rich keep getting richer. The Saints go ahead and add yet another weapon in Emmanuel Sanders. Again, getting up there in years, but production in years don't necessarily mean anything. What do you think we're going to get from Emmanuel Sanders this year? Yeah, the Saints are always a, a tough team to, to project because they're super, super efficient. We know they're going to score a lot of touchdowns, but of late, you know, over the last three years especially, they haven't been throwing the ball nearly as much as what we saw maybe half a decade ago. Over the last three years, they've ranked either average or below average in pass attempts, which really limits the target volume for wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs on that team. And then on top of that, you know that Michael Thomas is going to get a large target share. You know that Alvin Kamara is going to get a large target share. And then Jared Cook is there as well. So right now I do have Emmanuel Sanders projected for the third highest target share on the Saints, which will get him between, you know, 80 to 90 targets. Uh, so he can't be fantasy relevant. I think that he's more of a high-end wide receiver four, low-end wide receiver three. My projections right now have Sanders for 64 receptions, 789 yards, and five to six touchdowns. All right, and I guess uh, no better place to end than with uh, a guy that's a total enigma. I don't know. Is it him? Is he hurt? Is he not? Is it Sean McVay? I don't know. Todd Gurley. Uh, you know, certainly not what he once was. Is it the contract, the money? What do you make of Todd Gurley and the fresh start he's going to get? Yeah, really volatile situation for Gurley, for sure, just given the knee and, and given what we saw last season. Um, you know, it's a good landing spot in terms of seeing volume similar to Houston, but also similar to Houston. We haven't seen the Atlanta running backs over the last couple of years score a ton of fantasy points. Part of the reason for that is that Atlanta hasn't been very run heavy close to the goal line, and they haven't run many goal line plays. Whereas if you look at LA, even last season, during Todd Gurley's down year, he was still able to score 14 total touchdowns because the Rams were re ranked really high in run rate close to the goal line and total plays close to the goal line. So there is a downgrade in terms of how many touchdowns Todd Gurley might score in this Atlanta Falcons offense, but there is a little bit more upside if they decide to use him more as a receiver, which is what we didn't see with Todd Gurley and the Rams last year. So in total, I have Gurley right now projected for 235 attempts, 964 rushing yards, eight touchdowns on the ground, and then through the air, I have him for 44 catches, 338 yards, and one to two touchdowns. So Todd Gurley has an opportunity, if his knees do hold up, to be a lower-end RB1 in fantasy. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Again, a lot of big names, a lot of new teams, a lot of new jerseys. And, of course, we'll be here with the FanDuel. Hurry up, getting you caught up with all the latest information on behalf of J.J. Zacharyson there of FanDuel. I'm Joe Ranieri. This has been another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. Be well. We'll talk to you again soon.